Today we're going to take a look at the improvements that have gone into crossplay in the 2020.8 release and I'm going to show you how to build the playbook that Harry showed in the part one of 2020.8 What's New in Prism Pro. So the workflow that Harry showed in the previous episode was comprised of three playbooks. And we're not gonna look too much about how to build the first two because they're pretty simple. Um, the first is using the alert trigger to detect an overprovisioned VM and send out a Slack notification. And the second is using that event trigger uh, to detect a power off request on VMs in a certain category and then um, create a service ticket from that. But the one that we're really interested in is once that service ticket is created, how we're able to set up a playbook to handle both the case where the request is approved and the request is denied. So I'm gonna come over here to create playbook. And the first thing we wanna do is select the webhook trigger. And this will give us more details once we save this about um, the instructions for using the trigger. But just to take a little bit of a look here, um, I have an idea of what I need to pass into this webhook trigger um, to be used throughout the playbook. Um, I know that I'm gonna need a VM. Uh, so here I have the information of that VM that I'll be passing in um, and use, calling it entity one. Um, and I also know that I'll be like, I'll be passing in a stringified JSON here. And this JSON, um, if you look here, I have two bodies actually. Uh, this will be what I'll send in in the case that my request is approved. The first thing I need to do is uh, I'm going to use the new string parse action added in 2020.8. Um, and the string I'd like to parse is that string one field that I'll be passing in. Uh, and the string parser lets you uh, parse different types of strings. You could parse XML, use a regex, parse just any old string. Um, but I'm going to use the JSON format because I'm passing in uh, some JSON there. And now I just need to fill in the path. So if we look back over here, we can see uh, I have two fields, message and status. So I'll be extracting out that status field. And now that we have the status field, which will tell us either it's equal to approved or denied, uh, I can use this to uh, set up some conditional statements here. So using the new branch action that was introduced in the 2020.8 release, I'm able to uh, set up a condition if the operand in this case is going to be that parse string that I'm getting from this string parser action. Um, and I wanna say if it's equal to approved, and I, I can also actually name this branch so it's a little easier for me to see it from the playbook view what, what this means here. So if approved, uh, now what are the steps I wanna do if it's approved? Well, I'd like to go ahead and reduce that VM's memory because the request is to reduce the memory. And then I'd like to send a Slack notification and let the VM owner know about that memory reduction as well as powering the VM back on. And for the example we showed, we also went ahead and sent a uh, REST API call to our ticket system to resolve that service ticket. Now let's take a look at the else uh, case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one more branch condition here and uh, I'm gonna set that to else. So uh, in the case that that status string equals anything besides approved, it'll hit this branch down here. And this is the uh, branch that's going to handle the case. Um, we're just going to assume that that means that it's denied. So all we did for the previous demo was send out a Slack notification. So I can, I can set up the Slack to say the request was denied. And I can also add other actions here. Say maybe I still would like to power on that VM in the case the request was denied. So I can do something like that. And that is all there is to setting up a, a playbook like this. So I can just save and close this and give it a name. And if we open this playbook up real quickly now, we can see uh, it's giving us those details about the webhook trigger. So I can go ahead and copy that ID over. And now when I'm making my request, I can fill, use this as my post body to uh, the URL that the webhook trigger has given me.
So thanks for watching this tutorial on how to set up playbooks using the new string parser and branch actions. Stay tuned for more episodes on how to make your IT operations more efficient.